In today's video, we're gonna be diving in depth on how to catch 15 times more bass this year. There's a lot of stuff that people talk about on the internet, whether it's tips and tricks, um, baits to help you catch more fish. But I think one thing that's not really talked about often is the conditions and how the weather affects the fish. It doesn't matter where you're fishing, whether you're fishing a lake, whether you're fishing a river, whether you're fishing a largemouth fishery, spotted bass fishery, smallmouth fishery. Um, these tips right here are gonna help you wherever you go. If you guys are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. Also hit the notification bell and hit the like button if you guys have been enjoying the content and if you guys want more tip videos I would like you guys to drop a comment down below on what tip video you would like to see next so in the last few videos we absolutely smacked the bass but the only reason we ended up catching them is because we figured out how this fish were reacting that type of day so one video I want to talk about and I kind of want to refer back to I think this is a segment that I want to start running on the channel is the big jig video that we filmed you guys are probably saying Noah yes you guys caught a lot of fish but one thing I would like to explain is why we caught those fish. So let's go ahead and dive into that video. Why did we catch 22 pounds worth of fish on big jigs that day? And one thing to really pay attention to is the weather that day. So it was actually bluebird skies. There was a lot of sun coming down. We started to target those laydowns um, that had a bunch of cover on them. It was, they were kind of steep. But one thing that we noticed is we were targeting the laydowns in the bins with the longer laydowns coming out that were closer to the spawning flats. Um, we're a little bit ahead of everybody else in this current time, the lakes that we were fishing. Um, we found a bunch of fish on bed last week. There's none on bed at this given time. But we're locating those areas with a bunch of laydowns, heavy cover, that were near some of those shallow areas where the fish are gonna bed. That was very important. Another thing is the reason why we caught them on those laydowns is because the sun was beaming down. Those fish were getting out of the sun, they were getting up in the laydowns. One thing that we noticed about 45 minutes before we ended off the day is the sun actually went all the way down. It was all cloud cover. The jig bite completely turned off. So instead of us continuing the fish that jig bite, what we should have done is tied on some moving baits and started covering some of those flats. You know, as the sun was coming down, some of the fish were feeding out um, on some bait on some of those flats. That was one thing that we should have done. If we would have adjusted to that the last 45 to 30 minutes of the day, we would have caught a lot more fish. Um, but let's move on to the next episode where we actually ended up catching them on moving baits in some of the laydowns. This one was very important. This day was actually a lot of cloud cover, a lot of cloud cover outside. One thing, one rule in thumb is when you see a lot of cloud cover, if it's an overcast day, those bass, especially largemouth, are going to be roaming a lot more. And what exactly do I mean by roaming? They're not gonna be exactly tucked up under all that cover as good as they would be when it's bluebird skies, when the sun is beaming down. Yes, there'll still be bass around that stuff. Yes, there's gonna be bass still tucked up on the wood. One thing that you gotta note about largemouth, which I believe a lot of you guys are fishing for, is that they love to be tucked up against cover and more importantly, trees, brush piles, lay towns. Anything with wood, largemouth bluff. So one thing that we noticed, we were skipping chatter baits, we we're throwing spinner baits on this overcast day around some of this cover on the bank, and it was going great for us. We weren't getting bites as often but we were still catching this bigger fish. One thing that I noticed is we would skip the chatterbait up under the tree. The fish wouldn't eat it until about five foot off the bank. Those fish are really just roaming the shorelines right there, trying to feed on bait, and they're moving a lot of the time. And that's gonna be tricky on some of those days with you know cloudy conditions, but also can be some of your best days on the water. And this fish can be a little more active. So now that we talked about pretty much what happened in those last two episodes and why we were productive and caught those fish, let's go ahead and talk about today, hop right into it, catch some fish, explain why those fish are positioned there, explain why those fish are eating this type of bait. And I promise you, if you take this information in and apply it to your next fishing trip, you will catch a lot more fish. Um, so if you guys are wondering about the conditions today, it's actually cloudy outside, it's overcast. It was supposed to rain today, but the rain ended up getting pushed off. And you guys are probably saying, oh man, the bite's gonna be insane. One thing that I paid attention to when I actually went on my Weather Channel app is that the pressure is actually 30.31. That's pretty high. Um, usually before a storm, if it's overcast like this, the pressure is going to be dropping, but it's rained the last few days, therefore the pressure really isn't spiking down. It's actually going up. I think as far as, as long as the day keeps moving on, I think the bite's going to heat up, but we're going to get out here. We're going to be chugging some moving baits. We're going to try some drop-offs. We're going to try some flats. We're going to try some laydowns. We're going to try some docks. We're just going to be covering water because I think the fish are going to be roaming a little bit more. My only worry with the pressure being high is that they're going to be a little bit slower, but we're going to have to figure out, let's go ahead and hop on the water, start 
start casting and see what we can figure out today. So the bait that we're going to be throwing today is a chatter bait, aka the chatter donkey. I'm right here, catches some big fish. I have two options right here. I have the six cents divine swim baits right here. If you guys would like a discount, you can get it below. We actually have the 3.8 inch swim bait right here. And then we have a 4.4 inch swim bait. So you guys are probably saying, um, Noah, why are you talking about this? Well, today, as I said, you know, cloudy. I think the fish are going to be roaming a little bit more. Pressure is a little bit higher. I don't know if the fish are going to want something so big and super aggressive. So we're going to actually go a little more finesse with the 3.8 inch. And it doesn't seem like it's really that much, but if you really look at it, there actually is a big difference. So we're going to go with this one. And this one's in, I believe, white ice, ghost ice minnow. We're going to put it on the back of this chatterbait and get to work, cover some water, figure out where these fish are positioned, and hopefully catch some big ones. Got him? I got him. There you go. Working it on the bottom. Wow, that is awesome. There we go. Nice little two pounder, but look how he ate that chatterbait right there. Choked that sucker. Little divine swim bait trailer. That's how you want it right there. He didn't even have the hook too good. But this one thing, we were playing around with how we're retrieving it. I let that thing sink to the bottom and was slow rolling it. Sure enough, caught a beautiful two pound bass. Get him back in the water, see what else we can figure out. But one thing to think about, we were on the bottom working it slow. Slow retrieve, kind of dragging it. Let's duplicate that. We're gonna try something a little bit more subtle, something that's on the bottom. We're gonna tie on a jig. This is the six cents divine jig right here. I've been catching them on it pretty good. That's what we caught that 22 pound bag on the other day. We're gonna give it a shot. This one's just green pumpkin with some blue in it. it. Looks awesome. We'll skip it under some of these docks and lay downs. One thing we're going to target too is working it far off the bank. These fish might be more on the drop offs. I think we just got to find them and see what they want. Remember how the last time started, it was kind of the same way. You hook that big one and we just got to kind of figure them out. I guess you can fish off of it a little bit. I'll throw up on it. There he is. Oh, he came off. Wow. I never took, you know, take one of my things. White bite, man. And he's barely picked it up. Just felt that weight. I think that was one of those good ones, man. Oh, there he is. Yep. Not bad. Oh, it's a bigger fish than I thought. Two and a half pounder. Wow. That's two casts in a row, Fletcher. Right there. This bank right here. Right Skipping this jig way up on these trees. Now, one thing to think about what I was talking about at the beginning, these fish are staging up near those areas where they're gonna spawn. This pop pocket's a perfect example. They're right here at the mouth. They're right here on the edge. Had two awesome bites and got this beautiful one on the jig. Let's start skipping back up there, see if we can catch another one. And I noticed that they're more off the bank. You know, this cloud cover has them not exactly positioned up under it. But beautiful fish, let's catch another one. Oh, I heard that. No freaking heard that. way. <laughs> Dude, that, he ate it like a top water off the limb. Unbelievable good fish too. It's about the size of the last one, maybe a little bigger. Look at him toting, bro. Oh man. Oh, that's a three pounder. Let's get you up in here, baby. Oh baby. That's a three pound fish. Yes, sir. Skip that jig under the tree, hung it off the limb. Bingo, you got it. Right here on the mouth, same spot. That's a three pound fish. All day. Look how fat he is, dude. Beautiful, beautiful. You can tell on his mouth. He is, I don't know if he's been caught a few times or you know, something happened to him, but beautiful three pound bass. We're getting bigger, getting better. Right here, let's get him back in the water. 
You can tell they're not really back in these creeks and they've positioned out towards the mouth of all these spots. And that's a very important thing to pay attention to and uh, getting more bites. That was three bites in about five minutes. Let's go, Fletcher. That's how we get it done. So we just found out that the fish are a little bit slower. You know, we started off with the chatter baits, covering some water, working them on the bottom, and that's how we were getting bites. So I switched up to this hybrid jig by six cents. Um, it's a little more subtle, can crawl across the bottom. It's not gonna have a lot of vibration, obviously, because it doesn't, you know, have a blade on the front of it like a chatter bait. Um, so I wanna talk a little bit about how we're working it. So we're throwing it up on the brush, um, whether we're skipping under the trees or hitting some piles just like this one. and. Uh, is that a fish? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh lost him. Dude, that was so annoying. I So I tried to, my hand slipped. When I like tried to grab my rod, it like, like fumbled <laughs> it. I just kind of hook him when I needed to. Wow, that was crazy though. That was insane. So to show you guys how we're working it, right there I really didn't do much. That was like a dead stick. Um, but we're throwing them up on these brush piles, these lay downs, letting it hit the bottom, and we're just slowly working it off the pile. Just like that, barely ticking our rod. We're not really stroking it up too much. We're not giving it a bunch of aggressive popping today. As I said, you know, the pressure's a little high. Um, I think as the bike gets and starts to heat up as the day goes on, I think you're gonna be able to work it a little bit more aggressive, a little bit faster. But as of now, we're working this thing pretty slow, you know, pretty finesse. So yeah, throw that thing out there, just giving it slight hops on the bottom. And that's exactly what's getting it done. So let's go ahead and start covering some more water. See if we can catch some bigger fish. So those first two bites are very soft. The second one is more of a spook. Ooh. Wow. Wow. Interesting. Let's get it right back up in there. He ate it on the skip. That was crazy. I felt the thump in my line. There he is. Wow. That jig, man. Dude, they're, they're precision, that. baby. Oh, baby. Beautiful fish right there. He ain't even quite two pounds, probably about a pound and a half, pound and three quarters max. But beautiful fish. More importantly, that's what happens. This is why I was telling you guys at the beginning of this episode really hone in on your skips, really hone in on your cast. That right there, that fish probably wouldn't have been caught if I couldn't have got that bait in the same exact spot. Fletcher bought, I mean, it was literally identical to where he bit, and it was way up in that tree. And uh, that's a beautiful fish. He's using a chatter bait, has a little bit more wobble. I'm using this jig, the Divine Hybrid jig. It's a little more subtle, and it's getting more bites, and you guys can tell. And uh, they're eating it really good. He's got to get it in the right spot. Beautiful fish. Let's catch a five pounder now. 